A 13-year-old boy faces a felony charge in Illinois for recording a conversation with his school principals without their consent. His state has one of the strictest eavesdropping laws in the country. We're not revealing the boy's name because of his age. He says he recorded the conversation when he was asked to explain why he wasn't showing up for <laughs> detention. I want to like, have protection because they're adults and it's usually their word against mine. When it's a child's word against an adult's word and there's no actual evidence of what was being said, the adult is going to be taken into account as the person being truthful automatically and that automatically renders the child totally voiceless. There's nothing there to protect the children. We asked the principal, assistant principal, and school superintendent for comment and have not received a response. The superintendent told the Illinois Policy Institute they cannot comment on a pending matter and are not authorized to release confidential student information. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins us now. Ricky, the law is pretty strict. You can't record a conversation without the consent of the other person. So what may be the teen's defense? He has a good defense, and it's a factual defense, about what is a reasonable expectation of privacy. According to his story, as has been reported, he was called to the principal's office. He was talking with the principal assistant principal, but in the reception area where the secretary would ordinarily sit with an open door. So there's a question of whether you have a reasonable expectation of privacy in a reception area and where people could walk by. In addition, this was a conversation about discipline. So wasn't it logical that the boy would go home and tell his parents and that the school disciplinarians would tell his parents, so is there a reasonable expectation? Okay, but why did he record it? What was the content of the conversation? Why did he feel the need to record it? Well, he felt the need to record it according to he and his mother because he had felt that the school was not treating him appropriately and therefore he wanted a record of it. So as soon as he tells them that he's recorded it, they stop the conversation abruptly and then two months later he finds out he's charged with a class four felony. And what does that mean, a class four felony, if I'm 13 and I'm facing hard, what am I facing? No, you are not facing hard yeah. time, but <laughs> nonetheless, it's, it's, we can laugh about it and I originally thought, oh, this will blow over. Then I found out in, in Illinois it's an overzealous prosecution by many about this particular statute. So what does he really face? He faces being adjudicated a delinquent as a juvenile, which mean he could go for, which means that he could go from being supervised or he could go to a juvenile detention center. And he could be held in a juvenile detention center, though I don't anticipate it, till the age of 21. In addition to that, as we all might have thought, if you have a juvenile adjudication, you think that your record no one can see. I would have certainly thought that. But it turns out that in certain instances, prospective employers and colleges can get a hold of a juvenile adjudication wow. of delinquency. Mm -hmm. That to me was pretty stunning. Yeah. And so there are collateral consequences. This is a kid who is interested perhaps in having a career in the military. Well, that's a problem for him. And a class four felony, if he were an adult, for heaven's sake, one to three years in prison and a $25,000 fine. It's no laughing matter. Well, now I know, what I know is I really want to hear the tape, but we asked the state's attorney who said he can't comment on a pending juvenile matter, but he did say this, when his office gets a case that meets the requirements for charges and can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, they file it. So is he just doing his job? It seems very extreme. It, it seems very extreme. Do you want me to just become a rocket ship going out of my chair? What <laughs> happened to prosecutorial... Not today. Not Somebody, today. Yeah. What happened to prosecutorial discretion? Yeah. We know that prosecutorial discretion exists throughout this country right. and that a lead prosecutor or even a line prosecutor... When I was a young assistant, I could go to my boss, the DA, mm -hmm. and say, do we really yeah. want to prosecute this case? Is this, this worth case? our time and resources? I mean, hey, wait a minute you know yeah. let's look we're an hour outside of Chicago why are we prosecuting this 13 year old as if this were a gun crime right. considering all that's yeah. going on in Chicago yes. thank you Ricky for a week or something always good to have Thanks you here me. at the table